favorite scary people. Here we have another creepypasta reading. Last time we did this was I read Clockwork. Today we are reading Robert the Doll. Hope you enjoy. In the late 1800s, Thomas Otto and his family moved into a mansion at the corner of Easton and Simpton Street in Key West, Florida, now known as the Art Artist House. The Ottos were known to be stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. It was the treatment of one such Hilton servant that provides a twist of the story. A one, this woman was hired to make care to take care of their son Robert. One day, Mrs. Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in their backyard and fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a lifelike doll, which stood three feet tall, had buttons for eyes, human hair, believed to be Robert's, and it was filled with straw. That doll resembled children were not unheard of during this time, but this one provide, provided to be special. Robert named the doll after himself and often dressed it as his in his clothes. Robert the doll became his trustworthy companion. He took it with him on shopping trips into town. The doll had a seat in the dinner table where Robert would sneak it bites of food when his parents weren't looking. Robert would even take be tucked into bed with the boy at night. Soon this innocent, rela innocent relationship took one strange nature. Soon after Robert chose to be referred by his middle name, Jean. After being scolded by his mother, he told her that Robert was the doll's name, not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Jean would say something in his childish manner and response could be heard in much lower voice. Sometimes Jean would become very agitated, worrying the servants and his mother. She would on occasions person to his to him to find her son cowering in the corner while Robert sat perched in a chair or on the bed glaring at him this was the only beginning household objects would be found thrown across the room Jean's toys turned into multiplied and giggling could be heard whenever this these unusual acts took place Jean always said, Robert did it. The boy took the punishment, but always insisted that the blame was Robert's. As the mischief grew more and more, servants took their leave as new ones were hired. The Otto's relatives felt it was time to do something. With the recommendation of a great aunt, Jean's parents removed Robert from his care and placed him in a box in the attic. This is where he resided for many years. After the death of his father, Jean was will willed his boyhood, boyhood house. He decided to live in the Victorian mansion with his new wife. Jean had become an artist and thought the house was specialish and would provide a place for him to paint. He went to the attic and dusted off his childhood toys. He became attached to the doll. Desperate his wife displeasure. Jean would take the doll along with them everywhere they went. He even sat in his favorite little chair while Jean and his wife slept nearby. The turret room became Robert's domain after Mrs. Otto moved him out of the attic into the attic. Their marriage slowly became sour until Mrs. Otto supposed, supposedly went insane and died of an unknown reason. Jean followed soon behind. Robert supposed, supposedly attacked people, sometime, sometimes lo locking them in the attic. People who passed by claimed to hear evil laughter coming from the turret room. 
For some time, Robert remained in the empty house by himself until a new family purchased the mansion and restored it. The doll was once again moved into the attic. This pleased it as much as the last time. <sighs> the doll was often found throughout the house. On one certain night, Robert was found in, on the foot of the owner's bed giggling with a kitchen knife in hand. And this was enough to send them fleeing from the home. Robert was later moved to the East Martello Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box, desperate for his new living quarters. The doll is believed to not have given up his menacing ways. Visitors and employees claim they have seen the doll move. The smell has been known to turn into a crawl. One employee cleaning cleaned Robert's Robert. Turn off all the lights and left the light. Alright, again. One employee cleaned Robert, turning off all the lights and left for the night. The next day he returned to find the lights turned on, Robert sitting in a different position that night before in the fresh layer of dust on his shoes some say he even cursed you if you want to take a picture of him you must ask politely if he he'll tilt his head in permission however if he doesn't and you take a picture anyway a curse will be fall upon you and anyone who accomplished you to the museum the same will happen if you make fun of him. To this day, Robert remains in the East Montreal Museum in his sailor suit, clutching his stuffed lion, continuing him his menacing way. Hope you enjoyed it, and comment down below what creepypasta you want to hear next. Bye!